Google has again presented something in their recent paper that has started calling the attention of many observers. Although many focus on the potential risks of this new product, we have something really amazing coming from Google with this new product, Soundstorm. And this video will be focused on highlighting the key details of this product. So it can even be used oh, yeah. to generate dialogues. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, like this one was generated by Soundstorm. Wait, what? And I would really like everyone to pay attention to this as everyone is likely to be impacted when this is released, one way or another. And what this is, is the most realistic voiceover that you might have come across in a while. And as is the trend now, Google has pointed out some pretty scary stuff that this technology can be used for. But we still don't see any action that they're taking to mitigate these risks. And this is really troubling. However, we really hope the government steps in soon enough, as Sam Altman already suggested to Congress before things get so much out of hand. Soundstorm, as already pointed out, provides a hyper-realistic voiceover. I mean, you could almost hear the breath intakes that come from real human speeches, and it's been able to achieve the fluidity that comes with human speech. The kind of robotic performance you get from software like Siri and regular Google voiceovers is eliminated here. And that's not the most interesting part. In this video, I'll be playing some of the demo voiceovers from the paper released by Google. And the crazy thing is that Soundstorm can be able to clone any voice from just a three second recording. That's just really insane. And as much as you might think that's amazing, we're approaching a time when it will be really difficult to tell what's real and what's not because of these hyper-realistic deepfakes that are aided by AI. And we have some instances that we'll look at later in this video that will show how technologies like this have already been used to do some really bad stuff. And as you can see here from this abstract of this paper on your screen, Google gave an overview of the mechanics behind the functionality of this model and also the efficiency level. And the speed at which this thing works is just insane. As you can see in this section of the abstract where we have Compared to the auto-regressive generation approach of Audio LM, our model produces audio of the same quality and with higher consistency in voice and acoustic conditions, while being two orders of magnitude faster. Soundstorm generates 30 seconds of audio in 0.5 seconds on a TPU V4. We demonstrate the ability of our model to scale audio generation to longer sequences by synthesizing high quality natural dialogue segments, given a transcript annotated with speaker turns and a short prompt with the speaker's voices. Being able to generate 30 seconds of audio in 0.5 seconds is pretty impressive considering the quality this software gives out. And this means that this AI can be able to run a normal human interaction and no one will suspect anything. And in case you don't appreciate this enough, what we have here is a demo clip from Google. Now listen. Well, it's a parallel decoder for efficient audio generation. Uh, so it can even be oh used yeah. to generate dialogues. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, like this one was generated by Soundstorm. Wait, what? Without being told, I would definitely mistake that for a real human voice. The tone and inflections that are natural to human speech present in this thing are just amazing. And there will be tons of applications for this when it is finally rolled out. And definitely we'll be seeing some huge changes to the already existing voiceovers. For a better understanding of how this model runs, I'll show you this video clip that Google shared in 2022 about Audio LM. Nay, nay, lording, answered Wolf. We know not how to call you lord or lady. We have lived too long in the forest. And as you can see here, there's a gray line in between the recordings. The first parts are basically prompts given to the AI to work with, and whatever you hear after the gray line is basically what the AI generates on its own. Without any prior training or anything like that, just listen to this and I promise this is just amazing. Our first impressions of people are, in 9 cases out of 10, mere spectacle reflections of the actuality of things. But they are impressions of something different. This technology is what we have being advanced here in this new paper. And this paper has three very interesting parts that give us a general overview of what we're to expect when this software finally rolls out. And this includes dialogue synthesis, prompted and unprompted generation, and baselines. Let's take a look at the first demo we have here under dialogue synthesis. And from here, you'll just understand why this is very impressive. Just like the version that I showed you earlier from the 2022 demo, we've two sections here as you can see, the voice prompt and the synthesized dialogue. 
What you hear is basically Soundstorm being able to create a whole dialogue with just three seconds voice prompt. Now listen to this voice prompt. And now we've got these two synthesized dialogues. Where did you go last summer? I went to Greece. It was amazing. Where did you go last summer? I went to Greece. It was amazing. Oh, that's great. I've always wanted to go to Greece. What was your favorite part? Uh, it's hard to choose just one favorite part, but yeah, I really loved the food. The seafood was especially delicious. Yeah? And oh. the beaches were incredible. Uh -huh. We spent a lot of time swimming, uh, sunbathing, and, and exploring the islands. It's just crazy how the AI was able to retain the tone and other details in the voices of the two actors through the rest of the generated part. You can barely notice any different. And as you see here in the introduction of that section, it says right here that the following texts and speakers have not been seen during training. So all you hear from the synthesized part were just generated on the go by the AI. We're going to be seeing some impressive updates to Google Assistant with this, and there's no limit to what this can achieve when coupled with the large language models that we have available now. Listening to the other instances, you might notice some of the usual robotic sounding patterns interfere, but just within split seconds. Something really funny happened to me this morning. Oh wow, what? Something really funny happened to me this morning. Oh wow, what? Well, uh, I woke up, as usual. Uh huh. Went downstairs to have uh, breakfast. Yeah. Started eating. Then, uh, 10 minutes later, I realized it was the middle of the night. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, that's so funny. And this first synthesis in the second example didn't sound as good as the second one. And I'd like you to listen and observe this. I hope you'll agree with me that the second one can be picked over the first one. And I think Google will have these little issues sorted out soon as we expect that the model will still undergo some fine tuning over the coming months. And moving over to the second part of the paper here, which is the part that has the unprompted and prompted generation. When you go through the paper itself, there's this section that talks about speech intelligibility. And that's where we get a good description of what is meant by the prompted and unprompted versions. And it says right here, we perform these experiments both in the unprompted setup, where the methods can randomly sample speakers, and in the prompted setup, where the methods should respect the speaker identity provided in the form of ground truth sound stream tokens corresponding to the first three seconds. We use a conformer transducer L ASR model for transcription. So basically, in the unprompted version, the AI can make changes to the original audio in terms of the voice of the speaker but the prompted version is expected to totally mirror the prompt exactly as it is. And there are many ways I think this can be used to cause very serious damage, but we'll talk about that maybe in another video. Now, when you listen to the category under the unprompted version, we have the AI mimicking different voices, and I'd like you to listen to this. Mr. Metacroft the Elder, having not spoken one word thus far, himself introduced the newcomer to me with a side glance at his sons, which had something like defiance in it. A glance which, as I was sorry to notice, was returned with the defiance on their side by the two young men. Mr. Metacroft the Elder, having not spoken one word thus far, himself introduced the newcomer to me with a side glance at his sons, which had something like defiance in it. A glance which, as I was sorry to notice, was returned with defiance on their side by the two young men. Mr. Metacroft the Elder, having not spoken one word thus far, himself introduced the newcomer to me with a side glance at his sons, which had something like defiance in it. A glance which, as I was sorry to notice, was returned with a defiance on their side by the two young men. And you can hear that the AI switches to the original voice in the prompted part. I'll leave the link in the description in case you'll like to try these samples yourself. And in the third section, Baselines, we basically see that Soundstorm samples compared against other AI tools that are meant to carry out similar tasks. It says right here, when generating audio in the prompted case, Soundstorm generations have higher acoustic consistency and preserve the speaker's voice from the prompt better than the audio LM. Compared to RVQ level-wise, greedy decoding with the same model, Soundstorm produces audio with higher quality. And I want you to listen carefully and observe the differences we have here. He must descend with his heart full of charity and severity at the same time. He must descend with his heart full of charity and severity at the same time. He must descend with his heart full of charity and severity at the same time. 
He must descend with his heart full of charity and severity at the same time. And true to the description I just showed you, Soundstorm did perform better than the others, especially Greedy, which still has a lot of those echoing robotic sounds. Overall, it's pretty solid stuff that Google has here, and we look forward to when this will be fully rolled out for use. But as much as we look forward to working with this software, there's a million ways this could go wrong from every angle. And Google did acknowledge this in the broader impact section. Look here where it says, However, a more thorough analysis of any training data and its limitations would be an area of future work in line with our responsible AI principles. In turn, the ability to mimic a voice can have numerous malicious applications, including bypassing biometric identification and for the purpose of impersonation. And I assure you the risks are well above anything you'll see in this paper. And I'm quite eager to see how all these advancements will influence the upcoming elections, because like it or not, the role the new developments in AI plays spreads very much across most aspects of our lives. And the possibility of having these deepfakes can change everything. Although Google has it in the same section that these AI-generated versions can be tracked by dedicated classifiers, I can only see this working out in more formal scenarios like verifying evidence in courts and other similar situations. But we've had cases of these voice clone tools being used to defraud people by cloning the voice of a loved one or friend. And these are situations where you're likely not to have the luxury of running tests to verify identity. There's no doubt we'll be having more cases and I'm eager to see how these issues will be tackled. What are your thoughts on the impact of these new products? Do let us know in the comments, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye now!